So just before I ask each of you to um, tell us a few words uh, of what you're doing and also the approach you're taking to uh, resilience and, and local economies, um, I think I just would like to highlight a few concepts that Girol introduced. Um, you know, we've been talking about uh, incubation nation and this idea that we can incubate a lot of great ideas and initiatives here and spread them to the world. Uh, I think many countries have been exploring with alternative means of uh, measuring progress, human progress, um, and I found the well-being framework to be quite comprehensive of all. So I think in spirit of that, uh, the idea that New Zealand is even entertaining the possibility of a well-being framework is in itself an incubation that can be an amazing template for many other countries to learn from. And I think that also speaks to the discussion that we're gonna have here around well-being when we think about it from a regional and local perspective. Um, so without further ado, uh, Wendy, please let us know um, a little bit of who you are and how you're approaching uh, well-being from, from your work. Hi, I'm Wendy McGuinness. Um, I run a think tank in New Zealand, in Wellington. It's got a focus on uh, lo the long-term view. Um, my interest is very much in the 18 to 25-year-old age group. I think that they are the uh, most disconnected uh, group of people in terms of um, the future of New Zealand. They are incredibly important and we need to uh, create a place and space for them to engage in that process. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about talent and I thought I'd put Joshua's slide up right now, if that's right. Now that slide really resonated with me. Um, he's put forward four different approaches. Um, I saw Guril's approach uh, being basically the two bottom ones where he's talking about sort of community and, and then the very broad one about the ecosystem for New Zealand um, and the world. Um, I saw the pod as a little bit like the local council uh, that we have, a pod, a team of people and how important they are to get that team right. And then we have um, the lady on the top left uh, who's just talking about, you know, learning about herself. And what I wanted to do was um, share my observation around what talent means because it's a word that we use all the time. We have many different meanings and uh, this is from our research and our thinking and our talking to people. So we're going to pop the next slide up now. So how it works is like this. Imagine a sphere, okay? A round sphere, a ball. This ball is what I call character. It is the key to talent. If this is working well, everything else will work well around it. Now, I'm going to pass this ball actually to Shay, who's going to catch it. Okay, so you're holding on to character. Right, the next component that we have um, is personality. That's that bubbly thing that happens when we have connections and we have relationships. Believe it or not, I was incredibly quiet to the age of about 10, and that was part of my personality. I don't know what happened, but you know. So anyway, so personality, think of it as my hand above that sphere, and I'm gonna pass that to Adas. Great, catch, fantastic. And then the third component to talent, uh, for me, that is um, skills, practices that we learn. That's, that's more than education. That's what we learn, the skills that we learn about how to live our lives. It's not about skills just to get jobs, to get employment. It's about learning to live. So it's about the skills, the practices that we need to know to live. And I'm going to pass that to Hayden. Is Hayden here? Hayden Glass? Okay. Now, I'm going to build it back again. So... Shay, pass me the ball. Fantastic, I have hold of it. Great, great. So this is personality going on top of it. Yay. Fantastic, underneath. So now I have a sphere connected. The bit that you don't see is the character inside. It only shows itself through its personality and its use of its skills. Do you kind of get it? So it's actually when we look at the person, when we get to know people, we're actually on the outskirts. We don't see the character inside. We're seeing it through the personality and the way that they operate and use those skills. When we're dealing young in our lives, we don't, we're still learning what our character is. We're learning about the skills that we want to learn. 
we're understanding our personality and the way that we have relationships and connect to people. And as we get older, like Garou, we, some of us, and I'm hoping to aspire to that, will actually get enormous integrity between those three components. And we link together, and that's why in that diagram, there's actually, it's a connection between those um, three components. And so what I'm really interested in is, gosh, the sooner we can make those connections happen for the 18 to 25 year olds, that's creating talent. We waste talent when we don't make those connections, and that's what I'm really passionate about, and I see the potential. Some really interesting things. There was an article in the 1970s um, by Time magazine, which called, dreadful title, but Americans Wasted Black. Um, you know, understanding that if we have, <laughs> get us <into> a hand. <laughs> Sorry about that. I actually like that. <laughs> And anyway, so, you know, we just don't want to, we can't afford to waste the talent that we can potentially have in this country. We really can't. And what Kiwi Connect is trying to do, I think, is actually trying to connect and build that talent. And that's exactly why I'm going to pass this over to Chris. He'll be very pleased to have the baton passed. So he's actually trying to build that. So I'm trying to do it on an individual level, like that lady and I'm trying to do it in the pod level through our workshops that we do with Treasury, the Tackling Poverty. We've got, uh, just a plug there, for Foresight NZ, where we take 36, 18 to 25-year-olds on a three-day workshop in Level 5 of Treasury. Fantastic. I, I love it. And so it's actually, and then we go to communities. So over to you, Chris. The how. Thank you. Um, yeah, as, as touched on, uh, obviously my name's uh, Chris, Chris Upton, I'm the Chief Executive of the, the local council here, but there's quite a lot of personal, I guess, connection uh, with this valley and, and with the wider community. Uh, I, I grew up here, uh, I'm now 40, just turned 40, uh, and have been Chief Executive since I was 35. Um, but when you, you, you roll back the years, you know, I went through the local college, I married my college uh, sweetheart as she, as she was. Uh, and we headed off to London, and uh, not straight away, but I worked in sort of finance uh, area uh, and, and other areas, energy sector. I went off to London and came back. And at that point in time, uh, we never thought actually that Upper Hutt was a, a place where we would want to live. We didn't think it was sort of vibrant enough and, and that sort of thing had the, had the vibe going. But what brought us back uh, to this area was, was family. And, uh, and I counted up the other day, we have 33 uh, very close family members living within about 10 minutes of each other, uh, which, is, which is really cool. It's kind of challenging in a way because uh, if we get things wrong at the local, local council, I don't just get it in the neck from the politicians. My mother-in-law and others kind of come banging on the door. But, but it, it really gives you a deep-rooted sense of, I guess, engagement and pride in what you can potentially achieve locally. Uh, and, and that's quite unique. So I'm not somebody that would travel around and want to be the CEO of another council in the area or in the country because I'm actually not passionate about that. Um, I'm passionate about where I live and my family. Um, so coming back to, I guess, talent uh, development, you know, I have three young daughters uh, that, are, that are growing up and growing up rapidly, which is quite scary. Um, but I want to try and be a part of creating a place where they can be proud of and want to come back to in the future. And, and it's one thing that's been really, really neat about engaging with Yosef and Brian and Matthew and others is that actually, from an outside perspective looking in, you know, what we've got is actually pretty cool. Uh, it's a really neat environment to, I guess, cherish talent and help it grow. And, and at the local council, I guess, what can we do to help enable that? And in the past, I think we've always been in a space where we've been trying to be something that we're not because what we are is not quite good enough. Um, but that's changed in, in recent times and we've now got a, a, a new direction, a new vision, and it's built on a uh, sort of um, catchphrase around life, leisure, live it. And that's about, you know, we, we've talked about the fantastic um, environment that we live in but we possibly don't have the access to that that we would desire. And, and what could we do if we actually ramped that up and hit it out of the park? Who else could we attract to this environment without ruining the environment that we have and, and obviously the, the fantastic space here? Who else could we attract and obviously look at the economic benefits that could be, um, I guess, growing out of that? 
So, you know, we're, locally we are trying to do it, but we also realise we can't do it alone. Uh, it needs, you know, the wider community to help interact and to grow those sort of opportunities. So. Thank you both for uh, that highlight of the areas that you're both involved in. Um, I'm interested in when what you talked about uh, talent being a combination of personality, character, and skills. Uh, because a lot of time when we think about talent development, we end up focusing a lot more on the specific skill sets. Um, and what we're learning today in, in, in a space of rapid change, specific skill sets are evolving quite fast. I have many friends who are uh, in MBA programs or, or just done with them. And what they're saying is the business world has changed quite fast from the day you got in uh, compared to the day when you leave the MBA program. So you're actually actively learning to change. And so how can educational institutions be thinking about um, that way of developing talent and whether it is all up to educational institutions to develop that more comprehensive model of talent? It's a massive question. Um, I think what might help is so when I when I think about what character is as dis different from personality is character is what you have to work on every day all day, it stops you gossiping, it stops you being mean or nasty, whereas personality is just how you wake up, it's who you are. So what what that tells me is that we actually have to work at building our character. Um, character was actually pre. Um, madman and all the advertising agency, character was actually what was in the books that were written sort of about pre-1950. You would say Jack Smith had fantastic character. Character is something that is quietly happens without often people seeing it. It's, um, think, you know, when people were in war, no one was around, but they actually made someone's life better just for that last little bit. It's what's not seen. So that's why it's really tricky. So when I look at Girl Knows, I, you know, choosing people to come to a treasury workshop, you know, I'm really trying to understand through their resumes and their references what their actual character is and, and you know, that extent of whether they have great um, sort of integrity and alignment between, you know, I'm, I'm looking for that sort of special person. Character is actually, in my view, two different forms. Character, um, Paul um, Callaghan, who's been a major influence on me, um, he said that um, the biggest paradox of all is the fact that we have to live as though today is our last day, and we also have to live as though we will live forever. And, and the latter, of course, is sustainability. It's what you will see. But the fact is that we have to live today because we have to not waste any moment of today to try and make it better. I mean, we saw that from Mark Gilbert, you know. We, we have to do stuff now. So, and that's what you're all here for, but you also have the other. So you, you as a group, um, I know Paul Callaghan would be, you know, bowled over by, because that would be, that shows enormous character that you can actually run those two different worlds or conversations or paradoxes at the same time. But a lot of people, we, we educate for the individual. We, indi we educate for the I. And character, now we talk about character as being grit, you know? We talk about character as actually being, you know, resilient, you know, individually resilient. We don't talk about it as regards to empathy, the ability to be an us. We don't talk about character in terms of the ability to be kind or generous, which is actually you know, being to, given to someone else. So when I think about education, I actually, and I don't like the word education because it's educate, therefore someone thinks they know that teaching. So I wasn't a very good student, I was a bit of a rebel. Um, but I don't, so I don't like that word, but I actually, that's why I like um, skills, skills for living. Um, I really like that. I think that we should educate so that everyone has great skills for living a great life. Um, and I think that there is enormous potential for us all to keep learning um, and getting skills. And I know I'm still learning massively um, from you guys. Is that a big answer, is that all right? Yeah, 
Chris, how does that uh, apply to how you think about developing uh, a local economy? Uh, I know we've talked a lot about your desire to attract talent and, and create new talent in Upper Hutt. Um, what role does talent play in your design and, and how are you thinking about it and how are you going about it? Yeah, well, I think it's in, in two ways. I think one is, is creating an environment in which talent wants to live. Uh, so, so one is, uh, you know, definitely the, the physical place. I guess the other way is, is kind of going back to, to where it starts and trying to work with the schools um, around trying to create inspiring teachers uh, and, and working, working with them to, you know, to make uh, the topics that those teachers are, are, are putting onto our young kids so that the students are inspired. You know, there's many different ways of, of teaching a young person, but you can see and my wife's a teacher, so I've kind of you go through this. But you can see, you know, when a, a child comes out of that learning environment and is absolutely gripped by the topic that that teacher is, um, you know, selling to them, if you like, it, it's a, a totally different notion. And, and they take that away and they live with that. And I, you know, I've had comments from people who my wife's taught, who you know I think's a fantastic teacher. I'm reasonably biased, but you know they remember uh, some of those lessons that they've that they've had with it. And uh, and they remember that for a very, very long time. And, and it's not so much the topic by itself, I don't think, but it's the inspiration that they got from that to go on and explore further. Um, so we are looking, I guess, in ways in which we can do that. Um, you know, I think it's, it's exciting uh, with potential developments of what could happen over here on the farm. You know, what, what could be created there around hands-on learning around environmental sustainability and getting the young people here involved and how can they then I guess grow up and, and, and take that further. So, you know, I guess the hands-on practical ways of which it could be developed. Mm -hmm. uh, question to both of you. Um, are, there, are there ways that uh, smaller communities compared to cities, so smaller communities like um, Upper Hutt compared to a city, um, can create conducive environments for uh, amazing talent to be created and be thriving? Or do are we just seeing talent move into big cities and the small places are actually losing out? Uh, I think you could probably answer that, Joseph, to, to be fair. If you think, um, you know, why, why do you live here? You know, so, so what is it that creates that environment? Uh, you know, talking with, with Sam before, you know, I remember seeing Sam when the Christchurch earthquake hit. Uh, and, and obviously the key role that he had in bringing people together. You know, why, why have you come to Upper Hutt and, and this valley? So what is it that, that's pulling you here? And, and therefore, I guess, what can us, I guess, as local council do to help, help grab that um, opportunity and, and enhance it? And really, you know, just provide, I guess, the, the essence that can help you go out and, and do the things that you do. Because I don't think local government probably has the answer on its own. Um, but it's kind of local government or bureaucracy not getting in the way. Um, so I, I think, you know, that's probably a good question to you to answer yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that was a political answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you touched upon it first, which is uh, creating an environment where talent wants to live. And I've lived in cities my entire life, and I go to cities all the time. Um, but having space to breathe, there's just, you can't pay for that. There's, there's nothing that compares to that. Um, and there's a lot of noise in a lot of highly concentrated places. And uh, this desire to be surrounded with amazing talent doesn't have to be hundreds of thousands of people. It just need to be in the tens or twenties. And then you can actually focus and build real stuff and having a fantastic lifestyle. I mean, we've been taking groups here for swim in the Hutt River, and it's just one of the best rivers I swam in, diving off 10 meters into a river. Like, I've never done that before. Um, and it's fantastic, and that's in your backyard. Yeah, it's, it's kind of um, taking those things that I've had all my life, taking it for granted. I come for rides through here on my road bike a um, couple of times a week, and on the odd occasion, I come around the corner and there's a fellow deer kind of standing in the middle of the road, and it's like, what do I do now? You know, and that's kind of a, a neat experience that I take for granted all the time, but for somebody new coming in, that's quite a magical experience. And so it's not 
it's not being I'm afraid of that, but it's celebrating that and actually looking and welcoming other people in to actually experience that and telling people about it, not kind of going, this is a great little jewel and we'll keep it to ourselves. So. I'd just like to um, add to that, um, I think alignment is really important. So when, when I talk about those components, and I, I talk about that in regard to an individual, I also see it in regard to a team, um, the pod idea. I also see it in terms of um, communities like Upper Hutt, and I also see it in terms of cities. And I think one of the big mistakes at the moment is that there's a lot of benchmarking that's going around around cities, comparing one city to another. We're getting a lot of chatter around um, Christchurch being forgotten. We're getting a lot of chatter around you know, Auckland, Wellington happening, um, and also a lot of chatter around the Hutt and Wellington city. I think that um, that's a tiny wee conversation. If I could put it so bluntly, I think the big conversation is actually around New Zealand, how we can contribute, and how. So, so then you're starting to say, "Hey, we're we're just a massive ecosystem. There are parts in our ecosystem like Upper Hutt has to be different from Lower Hutt, has to be different from Wellington City. We need to build on the communities that we have, the skills we have, the personality we have, and the character that is intrinsic to that area." So I'm very into this, um, you know, let's create variety. Hey, how diverse could we be? How, how creative and imaginative we could be? Um, what an exciting place to come and travel New Zealand because you're going to travel all, across all these different exciting places, including Upper Hutt. Um, guys, and ladies and gentlemen, a very big round of applause, please. <laughs>